I'll be talking about neoadjuvant therapy. All right, so thanks everyone. So I'm going to be talking about neoadjuvant therapy for non-melanoma skin cancer, but I'm going to be focusing on cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma as Greg just did, um, where we have most of the this exciting data coming through. So um, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, it's the second most common skin cancer after basal cell carcinoma, and the incidence is increasing, and this is likely due to, you know, sun exposure. UV radiation is the most important risk factor for the development of this type of skin cancer. You know, older population, more sun exposure, so age is also um, a pretty prominent risk factor for developing uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. And increasingly, we are seeing immune suppression as a pretty significant risk factor as well, such as someone who's on chronic steroids, or most importantly, we're starting to see a lot of these skin cancers uh, become more aggressive in patients who have a solid organ transplant because they are on special medicines to reduce their um, immune system um, so they can tolerate the new organ. Um, so these skin cancers, we're seeing, you know, more than 2 million new cases each year, and this number continues to grow. And just in 2019, we had over 56,000 deaths in the U.S. alone. So this is becoming um, more significant, I think, for the medical oncologist. And I'm a medical oncologist, as um, and I work along with Greg, as he mentioned. So right now, the standard treatment for a uh, cutaneous squamous cell that is not amenable to Mohs surgery and perhaps one that is high risk as um, explained by the risk factors that Greg mentioned would be surgery. So we would refer them to the surgeon and have it taken out. And then depending on how high risk that cancer was, um, meaning, you know, what is the chance and the likelihood that the cancer will come back after we have removed it with surgery, we may consider giving radiation after surgery. So that is known as adjuvant radiation to try to decrease the chance of the cancer coming back in the area where it was and also decrease the chance of the cancer coming back in the lymph nodes near the area where it's draining. But when we think about surgery, we really have to think about three important considerations. One is we have to think about cosmetic outcomes. You know, um, we don't want to pursue a surgery that is going to be significantly disfiguring as that impacts quality of life. We also want to consider the functional outcomes. Will this surgery impact how you are able to see, how you are able to chew, talk, eat? Those are really important for quality of life as well. And we also want to think about oncologic outcomes, meaning are we able to remove all of the tumor and have all the edges be negative? Are we able to, you know, have you be cancer free from the, you know, have the cancer not come back for a certain period of time? Hopefully, you know, that is a long period of time. So all these things are really important things we have to think about when we think about surgery. And as you can see in this picture, this is a very large cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. And if we were just to go with surgery right now, you know, we may think that she may have a very large defect. It could impact cosmesis. Depending on how much they need to remove, you know, maybe her eye could be affected, her ear, or maybe close to her mouth. So we have to think about function. And if we take all of this out, can we actually get all of it? Can we get negative margins? Um, and so one thing that has recently come to play is immunotherapy for non-melanoma skin cancer. And this has really revolutionized how we treat advanced non-melanoma skin cancer. I listed the other non-melanoma skin cancers here just for context, but I'm going to be focusing on cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. So um, immunotherapy is a class of uh, intravenous medications um, that basically tell your immune system to be able to recognize the cancer. The cancer is really smart and is able to hide from your immune system, but these medicines are able to break that block and have your immune system um, go and attack the cancer. And this is how these drugs work. These drugs are not chemotherapy. And in this timeline, you can see that in 2018, the immunotherapy semiplumab, which is an inhibitor of PDL or PD1. Uh, so it blocks PD1 on the T cell 
um, was approved in 2018. And then two years later, another very similar drug called pembrolizumab, which is another PD-1 inhibitor, was approved for cutaneous squamous cell as well. And why um, are we talking about this? Well, these drugs have done really great things for patients who have really advanced uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. And But why do they work for this disease? So as I mentioned in the first slide, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma is a skin cancer that is driven by the sun, by the UV radiation from the sun. And so these cancers typically have lots of mutations in the tumor. And when you have lots of mutations, some of those mutations will end up making proteins that are really abnormal. So the tumor has lots of abnormal proteins, and then the body will recognize the abnormal proteins as being really foreign. So if you have a lot of really foreign proteins or really uh, a lot of neoantigens, um, that makes your tumor more immunogenic and more likely to respond to these immunotherapy medications. And as you can see in this slide, all the way to the right, we have skin squamous cell carcinoma. It has one of the highest uh, tumor mutation burdens, meaning that it has a lot of mutations um, when we um, analyze it by molecular testing. And that's why these drugs work so well for this type of skin cancer. So this is just an example. So this is a patient who is in his 10th decade of life who had a really aggressive and very advanced squamous cell carcinoma of his right shoulder. It had actually gone into his bone. Um, and since he was not a candidate for surgery because it had gone into his bone and he was an elderly gentleman who had other medical problems, and because we did not think that radiation alone would be appropriate because the lesion was so large and going into his bone, we gave him one of these immunotherapy medications. And so this is the outcome of what we saw um, after just being on the immunotherapy medication, semiflamab, which is one of the ones that is FDA approved for this skin cancer, you can see that the tumor literally melted. And so this makes us think, you know, can we use these drugs in a different setting? And so we go back to our standard treatment workflow where we said, you know, for these skin cancers that are high risk, we usually take them out with surgery and we may or may not give radiation afterwards depending on how high risk they are. But can we actually put immunotherapy somewhere in here to really improve how we treat these patients, maybe to improve surgery? But then where would we actually give it? Would we give it before surgery, after surgery, after radiation? And so that is where neoadjuvant therapy comes into play. So neoadjuvant just means before surgery. So this refers to any type of um, preoperative treatment. And this could be, you know, chemotherapy. It could be with radiation treatment. It could be with pills that um, target hormones. Or it could also be with immunotherapy as well. And this was actually first used in breast cancer many decades ago, where we found that in breast cancer, it actually made the tumors a lot smaller so that we could do surgery to conserve most of the breast rather than taking the whole breast off. So there are some things that we have to really think about when it comes to neoadjuvant uh, therapy. So as you can see on the left side, Neoadjuvant, meaning that it, the treatment is before the surgery. So we have the PD-1 inhibitor before the surgery. You know, we have the opportunity with this type of approach to really lower the surgical morbidity so we can improve surgical outcomes. We may also be able to, to decrease the need for radiation after the surgery. And this also may result in improved long-term outcomes, meaning that we may be able to help patients you know, have a better quality of life so they are able to live better. Maybe we are able to have their disease stay away for a lot longer and hopefully, you know, for a very long time to where they live longer as well. And because these drugs are so effective in this type of skin cancer, most patients will have a response within one to two doses. And so we are able to see if it's working within a relatively short time frame. And another great thing about this type of therapy is that after surgery, we're able to look at the surgical specimen with the pathologist under the microscope 
to really see how much tumor is left over. And that is something that um, may translate into better clinical outcomes. So this is just an example um, of um, how this has been used in clinical practice and studied. So um, back several years ago, there was a pilot study that was done at MD Anderson with just 20 patients. And all these patients had uh, advanced cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, and they received two doses of this PD-1 inhibitor called simiplumab before surgery. And then they all went to surgery. And on the left-hand side of the graph, or the, you can see that the bars in red um, are labeled as PCR. So this is pathologic complete response, meaning that when we look at this, uh, their tumor under the microscope, we can't actually see any tumor in the surgical specimen. And the orange bars indicate that when we looked at it under the microscope, we saw 10% or less of the tumor, which is a really great response, meaning that this is what the two doses of immune therapy was able to achieve. But as you can see in the picture, it looks like he this patient still had quite a bit of tumor left both on his exam on the picture and also on the CT scan that you can see here. But this patient actually had um, a major pathologic response, meaning that they only saw 6% of tumor cells when they looked at his surgical specimen. So one of the important things that we've noticed when we give neoadjuvant immune therapy is that what we see on exam and on the imaging may not necessarily correlate with what we see under the microscope. What we see under the microscope may actually be a lot better. This is the study that followed that small study of 20 patients. This was the similar concept using the same drug before surgery, but instead of two doses, they gave four doses. And this study had 79 patients where the other study had 20 patients. And their goal was to see, you know, how much of the tumor was left over in the surgical specimen after um, the four doses of the PD-1 inhibitor. And what they saw was that, you know, 51% of the patients in this study had no evidence of tumor in their surgical specimen after, um, after this. And that 10% of these patients actually had 10% or less of tumor in the surgical specimen. And again, as you can see in this graph, there is a discrepancy between the pathology, so what we see under the microscope, versus what we actually see on a CT scan. And most of these um, tumors actually occur on the head and neck because that is where most of us get sun exposure. Um, and for the patients in this study of 70, uh, 79 patients, um, you know, almost 50% of them had a pretty sizable tumor. If we remember the staging system from what Dr. Daniels presented, um, they were labeled as a T3, meaning that the tumor was either large or had aggressive features. And 60% of the patients in this study already had the tumor spread to their lymph nodes. So this is a pretty remarkable um, response uh, at, before surgery. So this is an example of how we have used this in clinical practice. So this is a 73-year-old patient, and he had a very large um, you know, mass growing from his right eye. So several years ago, he had a skin cancer in the same region that was removed, and then it had come back, but he was not able to seek care in a timely manner, and it had grown to be this large. And as you can see in the images, um, this ended up being um, quite locally advanced with um, invasion. And he was not felt to be a good surgical candidate because they would have to take his eye out um, and he was also not felt to be a good radiation candidate alone because it would affect his vision. And these are things that are really important to him. So we went on the road of neoadjuvant immunotherapy. So he received three doses of simiplumab, and he has had an amazing response. You can see a significant reduction in the tumor size. They went ahead and did the surgery. They were able to save his eye. So they took off you know, the, the, the right side of his eye with the bone, the muscle and the tissue. Um, they took out his right parotid gland in his right cheek area. They took out the lymph nodes in his right neck. And then they covered all this defect with a flap from his right arm. 
And when they looked at his tumor under the microscope, they saw nothing. So they saw zero tumor cells, which is consistent with that PCR or that pathologic CR. And for um, the patients in the first study of the 20 patients, they have been followed up for over three years now. And for the patients that had 0% tumor seen on the surgical specimen, they did not receive uh, radiation where if they, you know, had never received neoadjuvant immunotherapy and had gone straight to surgery, they would have most definitely required radiation. And a lot of those patients that did not receive radiation but had no evidence of tumor on their surgical specimen um, are continuing to do well um, after the three-year time point, which is um, pretty uh, great news. So some takeaway points about neoadjuvant immunotherapy. So immunotherapy in general has really changed the treatment landscape for non-melanoma skin cancers. And these neoadjuvant approaches are really promising. And so the, you know, the multidisciplinary teams, the discussions, you know, either tumor board or just, you know, informal discussions with other people are really important because we need the, um, you know, input from radiation oncology, medical oncology, surgical oncology to really treat these patients. And just a reminder to wear your sunscreen. And with that, I will end my slideshow.